The chase game is the first challenge for the Coding with Scratch course. This challenge will introduce a number of the key ideas in making games and will get you started. By now you should already have your Scratch account and know some of the basic things about making scripts and working with sprites. So let's get straight to the chase game. The goal of this game is to create a very simple game. We've got two sprites. Here I've got my bug and my scratch cat and one is going to chase the other one. In this case, the bug will chase the cat. In this game, I need one of the sprites to be controlled by the player. So the cat will be controlled by the arrow keys, and the bug is going to be controlled by the computer using some basic artificial intelligence. That's really cool stuff. I think you're going to like it. So let's look into how this works. Your game should work something like this. When you click the green flag, the chaser starts chasing. And if you use the arrow keys, oh, see there, you can't escape. And as you can see, once he was caught, he was sad. Very good. So that's the basic idea of the game. And so we need to learn a couple of tricks in order to make this work. So to get started, you'll click the Create button, which takes you to the developer. The first thing we'll need is two sprites. I have my cat here, sprite 1, already, so we'll grab another sprite from the sprite library. Click on this icon here at the top. Okay, now I've got my two sprites. That's pretty much all I need in terms of graphics. So let's look at the scripts. I want the cat to be controlled by the arrow keys. So that means every time the user presses an arrow key, it's going to move. When you press an arrow key, that's called an event. And events are the first important thing we need to learn. There's a whole category under scripts called events. And the event we want is the second one there. It says when the space key is pressed. You'll notice there's a little arrow here for the space key. And I can change that to the right arrow. There's a number of ways you can make your cat move. It can do many things. A simple way to move the cat is to make it point in the direction you want it to go and then make it move forward. So in order to do that, we go to motion and select point in direction. And if you click on the little arrow here, it will tell you which arrow is which. It's using degrees and they'll give you a little guide here. So if I wanted to point to the right, I'd say 90. Then I give it a simple move statement so I can move. Then if I press my arrow key, you'll see the cat move. So you'll need something like that for the cat. The beetle will be a little more complicated. The beetle is going to be controlled by the computer, so it's going to start at the beginning of the game. And with Scratch, we always use the green flag to begin. So the beetle will start with the green flag. I'm not going to tell you how to do the entire beetle script, because you need to play around with it and explore but I'll give you a few pointers to get started. When your game starts, you want to make sure your beetle starts in a good position. So you want to give it a starting location that's further away, maybe off to the side here someplace. So let's get the beetle out of the way. All right, that's already better. And you notice there's this block that I'm using called go to, and the numbers on the go to will update every time you move the beetle. So I can move it to the position I want, and when I drag the sprite, the numbers are already there. I can also find out the numbers by moving my mouse around. I just take it around the screen a bit and you'll see those go. You'll see the X and the Y coordinates here. If you're not familiar with X and Y coordinates, you should ask somebody or do a web search. It's really useful in math class. So when the beetle's going to start chasing, it needs to do a few things. It needs to figure out where the cat is and we can use the block that says point towards. You can tell it to point towards sprite 1, the cat. Of course it wants to move forward in order to chase sprite 1. We're going to need to do this many times, so we'll need a loop. We talked before about how loops are C-shaped. I like the forever loop for this one, so I just drag it over and make sure the point towards and your move are inside the loop. So it works over and over again. 
don't put the go to command inside the loop or it'll stay in one spot. It will keep going back there. Also, you'll need to find a way to determine when the cat is caught. And what you'll use for that are the sensing blocks. The first one under sensing is the touching block. And you can tell it touching that. Now this block has a strange shape. It's like a stretched out hexagon. And that is a true-false block. So it's going to be either true or false. If I want to find out what it is right now, double click it, and it says false. This only fits into spaces that have that shape. There's particular blocks that take a true-false option, so you need to figure out where this goes and how you'll check to see if the cat has been caught or not, and then it needs to do something with that. We'll post some hints later in the week if you're getting stuck. Alright, that should be enough to get started. Make your games much cooler than mine, and we'll see some of the best ones at the end of the week. Good luck! We'll see you on the web.